Time now for Consumer Confidential with KTLA 5's David Lazarus. He is here in the studio with us, and we're talking about holiday travel and that it may get a little bit more sticky. What's going on? It certainly could be more turbulent, you could say. Aww. In fact, fair to say this is turning into the winter of discontent for airline pilots. Just the other day, we talked about how <clears throat> Delta pilots have already authorized a strike if they can't get an equitable contract. Now comes word that the unions representing about 30,000 American and United pilots have also rejected the latest contract offers from their respective carriers as well. There's some hardball negotiating going on. Back in 2020, during the worst of the pandemic, the U.S. airline industry lost about $35 billion, but things have turned around in a big way as Americans have started traveling again, and all the big carriers are once again profitable. The unions representing the pilots and the flight attendants now want a piece of the action, which doesn't seem like too much to ask considering how much they had to sacrifice during the pandemic, but the carriers are all kind of staying uh, staying firm and saying no that's just too soon for us to be more generous in these contract offers which suggests that there could be some bumpy flights ahead for passengers if we start seeing cancellations so far none of that in fact delta has gone out of its way to say their flights are still flying despite the strike vote nevertheless there seems to be some strong negotiations going on. At this point, it looks like a lot of posturing, which is typical in the labor world. But keep in mind, the pilots have very strong unions and they've never hesitated in the past to walk off. Also keep in mind, a railway strike is now also being discussed as well. All right, new Twitter owner Elon Musk, he's already cleaned out the executive suite. Now he's reportedly about to fire half the company's workforce tomorrow. Could come tomorrow, indeed. According to Bloomberg News, Musk is on the verge of firing about half of Twitter's, Twitter's workforce. That's 3,700 people up at the, mostly the San Francisco headquarters, but in their other ancillary offices as well. Why? Well, Twitter, uh, Musk has made no secret of the fact that he felt that the company was already overstaffed, but more importantly, the guy just overspent $44 billion and he needs to find ways to make savings. Cutting back on the uh, workforce is obviously one way to reduce overhead. Another is to introduce a new subscription fee, and that's something that's also apparently in the offing with a tentative $8 fee potentially being introduced to give Twitter users, well, full functionality of the site. You don't have to pay, but if you want all the bells and whistles, you got to pay. And that's going to be a thing as well. Now, this is a difficult time, obviously, not just for Twitter, but all social media sites, which are dealing with diminished ad revenue and have to find new ways of generating revenue. Musk, for his part, seems to be enjoying all the notoriety he's generating. His latest tweets have seemed to display a sense of satisfaction that he's causing this much controversy out there. We'll see if he enjoys that as much as, say, Mark Zuckerberg does over mm. at Facebook. Yeah. Well, we watched Peloton just boom during the coronavirus time, but now not so much right now. It's sad because Peloton is a good brand, a good company with a very loyal following, but they just can't find their way in a post-pandemic environment now that gyms have reopened and people are watching their spending at a time of enormous economizing amidst a looming recession. And what Peloton is offering, it's not an easy sell. Very expensive gear and $44 monthly subscription fees, and now today they've brought out their latest quarter results. It's not pretty. Another $408 million lost over the last three months. In a sense, you can say that's an improvement because in the quarter just prior, they lost $1.3 billion. Nevertheless, the CEO of the company in the earnings call today put an upbeat spin, if you will, on how things are going, saying that he sees a turnaround in effect that's debatable at this point. In fact, this much distress, dis distress typically would make a company an acquisition target. The fact that no one stepped up to buy that Peloton sort of suggests that nobody can figure out how to make its current business plan work. There had been talk that Amazon was interested. The fact that Amazon never stepped up, that says a lot. All right. Anything juicy for one o'clock? I'm gonna tell people how they might be able to save a buck on their Thanksgiving feast. Oh, okay, perfect. That's coming.